Hi, welcome back to Ask a Creationist. I'm Todd Wood. I'm a young earth creationist. I'm here to answer your questions about science and the Bible, origins, creation, evolution, fossils, doctrine, theology, whatever you got. Let me know. We're interested in your questions. And maybe one of your questions could be featured on a future episode of Ask a Creationist. This week's question is fairly simple. Again, did dinosaurs really have feathers? And the answer is yes. Yes, they did. So here's a picture of me way back whew, a long time ago when I was much younger. I'm at the Carnegie Museum. I'm checking out the feathered dinosaur exhibit. That guy right next to me there is called Cynornithosaurus. And we can zoom in on him. Take a closer look and you can see those amazing feathers as we zoom and scroll up his body. And it's remarkable the detail of feathers that are preserved on this fossil. And don't take my word for it again. Please, you know, check this out for yourself. You can go to Carnegie Museum and see the fossil for yourself. So... I'm not the only one who thinks so. There are young age creationists other than me who have written about these things. The lead author here is a professor at the Masters University in California, and they wrote this extensive paper. It's like 40 pages paper in the most recent international conference on creationism where they discussed the dinosaur feathers and how they fit into young age creationism. And their conclusions were that there are at minimum probably eight different created kinds of feathered dinosaurs. None of these groups show conclusive evidence for continuity with Aviali. What that means is they're not connected to birds, okay? So if we think about the creationist orchard, right? So evolutionists have their single evolutionary tree that connects all living things, supposedly back to a common ancestor. Creationists have their orchard, which consists of many different trees, it all goes back to ancestors that were created by God at creation. And so we have these feathered dinosaurs, and there are at least eight different trees, according to the work of McLean and his colleagues, that represent these created kinds of dinosaurs that had feathers. They're not bird ancestors. They're not connected to other dinosaurs, right? They're their own created kind that God made in the beginning. They're unique. They just happen to have feathers like modern birds. Now, some of you might be thinking in some stage of discomfort, what about evolution, right? Some evolutionists say that birds evolved from dinosaurs and that, you know, feathered dinosaurs are just exactly the sort of evidence you would expect if birds evolved from dinosaurs. Yeah, sure. I, you know, I, I don't really get too worked up about that. I know a lot of people get really antsy about that sort of thing. I'm not one of them. I think there are much bigger questions that I'm interested in, and that is, you know, what about God's creation? What does this mean for God's creation? I grew up thinking that the only thing in the world that had feathers were birds, right? This, this group of creatures, and they are not a single created kind. They are many different created kinds. But those created kinds were all united together as a thing that we call birds. And now we have these dinosaurs that also have feathers, which makes it really weird and strange. And I don't really know how to process it all. But I want to think here a little bit about this whole notion of the creationist orchard. So, you know, I don't know that creationists really think a lot about this, but, but maybe if they do, we can imagine that they, they see the world as this, this world of created kinds as just a big giant forest, right? And there are trees planted, you know, pretty much everywhere you could find a tree to plant, you plant a tree there. And so there is no overall pattern to this. It's just, it's just a forest. It's just exactly what you would see in a modern day forest. And I tend to think that's probably not the way God created. I tend to think that this is, that God's creation is far more deliberate and intentional and organized and meaningful than just slapping together a giant forest because he can. I tend to think that perhaps what we're looking at here, instead of this random array of things, if we could get back far enough and look in the right way, we would see a pretty amazing and a pretty intricate pattern. And that the array of these created kinds, these trees of created kinds, actually form something of a beautiful garden. And as I think about these sorts of fancy gardens, I'm of course immediately thinking about the Garden of Eden, right? And I think about how God created that garden specifically as a place for him to meet humanity, right? 
Adam and Eve would be with God in the garden. That was the intention. That was the design. And as such, it was a beautiful place, beautifully laid out, no doubt, and intentionally created as a place for God to bring people into fellowship with him, to to help them learn more about him. And as I think about the garden of created kinds, I can't help wonder if God did not simply create these created kinds in a way that would then create space for him to draw us into fellowship with him. The garden of created kinds and the garden of Eden have a lot in common. They are invitations for us to know God better. They are sacred space. It's not just this ancient garden that was destroyed in the flood, but the garden is all around us still, waiting for us to study it and to learn about the God who meets us there. And if you listen just right, you can probably hear him asking, where are you? He is waiting in this garden. And feathered dinosaurs, that's just one bush, that well, that's eight bushes, right, off to one side. And they're important, but they are not, you know, crucially important more so than many other plants that we find in God's beautiful garden. So hey, if you've enjoyed this video, check us out at coresci.org where you will find out more about our ministry, Core Academy of Science. You can also find links there to our social media accounts. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget to click like on this video, subscribe, click that bell if you want to get notifications for when we post new episodes of Ask a Creationist. And hey, if you go to coresci.org, you'll find out information about how you can support us. We would very much appreciate that. This year has been difficult for us with the COVID outbreak, as you might imagine. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.